Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, annoyingly, this won't be a first impressions. It, I did film first impressions and annoyingly lost the footage. But I am going to be playing with the Ether Beauty Joshua Tree palette today. So it was one that I've been eyeing out for ages. First of all, I think the packaging is stunning. I love the ombre effect. It's the same on the carton as well. Everything's fully recyclable. That's a great thing about Ether Beauty. If you've watched me for a while, you know I've enjoyed all the other palettes that um, I've tried from them and the highlighters. I would still love to try the blushes at some point, but um, I do love the eyeshadows. And I think I mentioned it in the very first palette I tried, the Rose Quartz, that I thought the mattes were some of the nicest mattes I've tried, clean beauty-wise. And I still stand by that with the Solstice and then the, Eth um, the Amethyst palette as well. But I really, really want to try this palette, and this is all mattes, which I think is amazing, and it's a slightly more of their colourful palette. And there are a few colours in here that really intrigued me, and that's why I kind of purchased it. Um, so this did retail for $58, which is the exact same amount as the other palettes I bought from them before. Um, weirdly, I didn't have to pay custom charge this time. I did pay, I want to say $20 dollars delivery I think um, but weirdly no custom charge which I usually do have so I don't know if it, it's changed or I just happen not to get charged this time so yes yeah, so you get 12 shades in here ultra matte finish inspired by the desert landscape in Joshua Tree um, crystal charged pigment infused with citron powder to help with your skin renewal skin's renewal while illuminating the skin with light reflective crystals um, it's formulated with organic hemp derived cannabis seed oil, organic shea butter and organic coconut oil for uber smooth one swipe application and hydrated glowing skin. So yeah, I'm excited to play it. Like I said, it's all, it's all clean, it's cruelty free, it's vegan, the packaging is fully recyclable. This you can take off and use it as a hairband if you wanted to. Um, because it's fully recyclable there is no mirror in the palette. So um, but you can see it's kind of a bit messy already because like I said I have played with this already. Um, the two colours that really intrigued me when I first got this palette were Agave which is beautiful deep green and then also Wildflower because I never, I don't have a colour like that in my collection. Um, so I'm going to be playing with this palette today and creating a look and I'll give you my thoughts on it. Like I said unfortunately not a first impressions but I really hope you enjoy and if you're interested then please keep on watching. So my eyes are prepped and primed ready to go. Um, I'm going to start off with the shade Agave, so I'm going to do quite a deep smoky eye, so this one down here, I'm going to take up my Royal Techniques shading brush, I think I wanted to go for this colour because also it's quite a full time autumn colour, and people really enjoyed my last Daisy Ready look, so thank you very much, and that was kind of more autumn themed as well, um, so I'm going to take this colour and I'm going to pack it on to the lid this colour on, it's a beautiful colour, absolutely beautiful, do the same with the other eye, I am going to take a little bit of agave again, but a very small amount, just to dip in, just to start buffing into the crease area. So like I said, I don't want to bring this too high up, but it needs to add a little bit more of that colour to buff into the crease. So I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to doing more full time looks, autumn time looks. Because they are some of my faves. Let me know kind of what looks you want to see from me. Autumnal wise, or just videos in general you'd like to see from me. I am planning on doing a sketching video soon because I know a few people wanted to see that as well. Um, so that will be coming soon. And I recently got the Lily Lolo Cream Foundation as I did get quite a few requests to try it out. So I will actually be trying it out at some point. Buffing it through the crease. I'm not blending it out perfectly at the moment. I'm just kind of building the colour up in the crease to get the intensity and then... I'm going to go in with a softer brush and really go ahead and get those edges nice and soft. So I'm looking forward to doing bolder lips as well. I find like autumn, winter time is a great time to do those really deep, bold lips. Right, fluffy brush. This is from Iconic London. I'm not going to add any product to it at the moment. Just going to go back and forth with what I've got already on the eye and start buffing that out. Now what I will say about this green because this is the colour I used in the very first one, is 
it doesn't mix quite so well with this yellow here, this citrine, I find, blending wise. Um, you have to be quite careful because it does create, they're kind of the two shades which can almost turn into what I'd call like a dirty colour, like dirty looking colour. Um, so that's the only thing I did find with the last look, that those two colours didn't quite work well together. Um, so it's just something I just want to let you know because I want to be, obviously, I want to share everything about this palette. What I'm going to do is just take a little bit of Joshua Tree, which is a slightly lighter green, on the fluffy brush and just use that just to further buff out the shade. Now it is this different tone of green, but I'm just going to use it to buff. I'm then going to dip into Pixie Rock. Fluffy brush again and just further buff these edges just so it's really soft and kind of blends into my brow bone nicely. Now I'm having the same issue that I had last time with this green looking weird and not buffing out as well as I'd hoped. It looks quite messy. I might take a little bit more of a garve. And just try and buff that into the crease and buff it into the other green I used. But this was kind of the thing I was having last time with it. It doesn't buff as well as the previous mattes have done. I don't know if it's a colour. But I had a struggle with this colour last time as well. I was hoping I could play around with it the second time and see... If it was the fact that I was using the yellow with it. Or what it may be. I mean, maybe one of these colours. I love the green, but I think it might just be one that's meant for the lid, and not so much buffing. Do you know what? I'm not enjoying this right now. I'm gonna go a different route with this because one of the reasons I wanted to try this palette, a because I've loved the rest of the palettes, but also that colour garb was the one that really stood out to me, along with wildflower. So I want to see uh, if I can go a different approach. I'm gonna do some of the more because there are some kind of more. I guess neutral tones in here. I'm going to build these up in the crease and then layer this as a lid colour and see if I can get a better blend because I'm really not enjoying this green through the crease. I just think it looks really messy. Okay, so I've got slightly tinged green eyes but I'm going to try it again but go a different route this time like I said. I'm going to go in with the shade Tumbleweed to begin with and I'm going to put this through the crease and blend upwards. Actually, I'll use a different colour to blend. I'm just going to pack this into the crease. Might even pop it onto the outer portion of my lid. Just see if I can get it to work this way. I'm just going to take it in this inner portion just here as well. Right, I will blend it in a second. I'm just going to go and do the same thing on the other eye. And just something to note, you do get fallout with these palettes. Um, I think because they're so pigmented, they does tend to be a little bit more fallout than um, kind of softer shadows. Um, so it's up to you if that's something you enjoy or really kind of... I know some people it really annoys people. Um, it doesn't bother me too much, but at the same time, you only need to tap in a little bit and it'll give you the colour payoff. So you don't need to kind of go back and forth and really wriggle that brush in the eyeshadow. A fluffy brush, I'm then going to go in with the shade Poppy, this one just here, and go ahead and go over that shade a bit more, Same brush, going in with Pixie Rock now, just to finish off that blend at the top. I'm actually going to get in with some of Rosewood now, this one here, but I'm going to keep it on the fluffy brush because I don't want a lot of this. I'm just going to 
build this kind of in this portion right here. Oh, that's a beautiful shade. Okay, so so far I'm happy with the blend that I've got going on here. So maybe it is just that green, but I'll soon find out, which will be disappointing, especially because the three tones I've kind of used, you know, I can use a Solstice palette for. So, um, I mean, if these work well with the green, then that's great. If not, I don't quite know how to work with that green. Like I said, what, that green was kind of one of the one one of the colours that really... I was really intrigued by. Try agave again. I'm gonna use the Real Techniques brush again. Pack this on. And see if it works nicely with the browns. And not necessarily a crease buffing color. I think I've got high hopes for this. I'm going to take the small taper brush. I'm going to go back in with, what are you, uh, Tumbleweed. And use that to start buffing these edges. Softening them up, really working in to that green. Okay, what I'm going to do is on that brush, take some more of a garve, a small amount, just so that I can, again, go blend it in with the brown. So it's going back in with that green now, and now using that to buff into the brown. So I might go back and forth with those two colours, just to get the blend. It's definitely giving a more grungy look, isn't it? So I'm going back in with Tumbleweed now. And to finish that middle section, uh, inner corner off, I'm going back with Poppy. Which is right in this section here. What I'm going to do is take some of... I'm going to say this wrong. Mesquite, Mesquite, this one here. And use that on the outer portion to create some depth there. Because that rosewood is beautiful, but it's not quite dark enough for this green. And I could go in with a really dark dark colour, almost a black colour, but I think that'd be too much almost. Whereas this colour I think would help it. I'm going to take a fluffy brush again and just go over its edges, just in this outer portion. Take my concealer brush and just tidy up these edges, because especially on this side I've gone a little crazy. Okay. So I'm definitely preferring this. It's definitely got more of a grungy feel to it. I'm still not in love with this yet. Um, but I'm going to go and move on to the lower lash line now. I'm going to take a guard first and pop this on the inner corner of the lower lash line only. And then on a pencil brush, I'm going to take Tumbleweed next. On its outer portion and kind of go over where the colours connect. And then finally, fluff your brush, taking some of Poppy and going over that. Just on the pencil brush, take a bit more of a garb, and I'm going to pop this kind of really close to the inner corner. I don't want it too blown out, but obviously there's no shimmer in here. So I'm going to use it as it kind of connects the lid to the out, the lower lash line. But keeping it very close, because I don't want it, because it's quite a dark colour. Okay, I'm going to quickly put some mascara on, add a lip, and then I'll be back to give some thoughts. So I've got mascara on, I've got a lip on. It's a very classic lip of mine, the Lily Lolo Nude Lip liner, the Au Natural lipstick, and then the Whisper lip gloss. Um, so, this definitely works better having the browns mixed with the greens. I think the greens don't work well as a crease colour and buffing out. It looks too, 
I don't know, it looks messy, I think. I'm still not 100% happy with this look and with the blend of the green with the browns. The browns alone, when I was doing it, worked perfectly. The green takes a little bit more work. I mean, it's certainly a grungy look. It's definitely perfect for this time of year. I still quite like it, but I'm not in love with it. Um, so I'm not going to give my complete... I don't know if I am happy that I got this palette now or if I'm not happy I've got this palette. Um, I think I need to do a part two. Um, I'm not going to do a second look in this video because I want to know your thoughts as well. If anyone's tried it, please let me know. Um, and yeah, like I said, the neutrals all blended perfectly together. But I've got the Solstice palette and I've got other palettes that I can do that with. It was more the colours I wanted to play with. And like I said, this was the one that I was really excited about. And I just think maybe for a blending colour, it doesn't work quite so well. Um, I think when I do a part two, I'm going to use some of the more brighter colours because like I said Wildflower is the other one I was really really intrigued to play with um, so I'm kind of a little bit deflated with this the kind of palette so far a little bit I mean um, I still stand by what like, I think what Ether Beauty stands for is amazing um, but I just know the experience I've had with the other palettes um, have been much better so like I said I'm not going to say if I I'm not going to say that I hate this palette at the moment. I'm going to give it another try. But like I said, we're not going to do it in this video. I want to hear what your kind of thoughts are, how it looks. Because how I'm when I'm blending it, it may look different to how it looks on camera. I don't know. So um, or if you've got any advice, if you've got this palette, let me know as well. But um, so yeah, so I'll do a part two. I'll use some more colourful, brighter colours in here just to get an overall thought about this palette. But so far, I think the packaging is beautiful. I love it. I love what Ether Beauty stand for, the fact everything's recyclable, ethical, everything like that. I'm just, especially because this colour, the agave colour was one I really wanted to try, I'm just slightly deflated by it. But I will definitely give it a second chance and see how it goes. So thank you so very much for watching, leave your thoughts down below. Any requests for future videos, please also leave down below and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.